Hard to believe a month has already passed. I can still hear his voice. I know. Even to this day, I can hear John's voice. Especially in the quiet of the evening. You're holding up well, Joe. Fritz would expect nothing less of me. In so doing, Sisyphus offended Zeus. Zeus punished Sisyphus by forcing him to roll an enormous boulder to the top of a very steep mountain. The problem was made worse in that every time the boulder neared the top of the mountain, it would roll back down, forcing Sisyphus to start all over. Somebody didn't fix the rail on the pig pen like they were supposed to. Got it. I got it. I got it. Just do the chores you're asked, and I wouldn't have to be chasing animals all over the place. It wasn't my fault. Shall we return to our seats? Yeah, it was so your fault. It was not. Whoa! <laughs> Miss Joe, two things. First, Mr. Leonard has come for his boy. And second, you have got to do something about the chores. The gate on the pig pen was supposed to be fixed. Mr. Mr. Leonard, is something wrong? Nothing wrong, Mrs. Bear. I've simply decided to remove my son from your school. Jeremy, are you unhappy? He's fine. I've merely had second thoughts. Second thoughts? I understand, because my husband is no longer here. I'm very sorry about the passing of your husband, Mrs. Bear, but I'm not the only parent to have doubts about this school. I recently learned that you take in delinquents from the street. My husband and I founded this school to provide an education for any boy. Whether or not he has money has nothing to do with his ability to learn. And you still have yet to hire a permanent teacher. Yes. But Franz, our student teacher, is... a is... student teacher. He may be adequate, but my son requires a man of much sounder reputation to teach him. Well, we have been interviewing teachers. I just want to be sure that he's the right teacher for my boys. And there's no caretaker on the grounds. When I arrived, there were pigs running around freely. Well, we've been interviewing caretakers as well. Our last caretaker had to leave suddenly. It's been very difficult finding a replacement, but we will find one. And I will find a new teacher, but you've got to give me some time. It's only been a month since my husband's passing. In the meantime, I promise you that this school will continue to function as well as it ever has. Everything is under control. You take that back. What are you going to do for those? Boys, can we please settle this teach later? Teach you some manners is what I'll do. Yeah, you teach them, Amel. Yeah, teach me. Do you stand? Do you It's just Joe. I'm oh, sorry, we didn't see you there. Are you all right? It's OK. It's OK. I'm OK. I'm OK. See? Everything's under control. Well, looks like your corn is nearly ripe, Emil. Yes, ma'am. Six days and nine hours. They'll be ready for the harvest. That sounds beautiful, Matt. 
Thanks. You know, I think you're right. It does help the plants grow. Well, then keep on playing. You'll have the biggest pumpkin patch in all of Concord. Tommy? What are you doing? I heard you could use the sun. Start a fire with a reading glass. A fire? Oh, of course. You mean from the sun's heat? Yep. Hmm. Like this summer when we went to Walden Pond for that picnic, the sun burned your skin so badly? Yeah, suppose so. Yeah. Boy, I remember that. You were in so much pain. You looked like a lobster. And Asia and I had to make that special poultice from aloe to cool your skin. Mm -mm -mm. I remember. You wouldn't happen to have any of that aloe right now, would you? Nope. But you could grow some. Yeah. Hmm. Asia has some seeds for you in the kitchen. Go on. Go on. Excuse me. Excuse me. Morning. Good morning. Um, may I help you? Nope. Almost done here. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, that's not what I meant. Um, who are you? Name's Nick Riley. I'm Joe. Joe Bear. I know. Heard in town you needed some help out here. I'm Dan. Pleased to meet you, Dan. This is my son, Rob. Hello, Rob. Hello. Listen, I can only help you for about a week. After that, I'm boarding a ship out of Boston Harbor. What kind of ship? Merchant Marine, headed back to South America. You know, my uncle was a captain in the Navy. I'm gonna get in the Navy, too. Good for you. He sunk two ships, killed over 100 men. Emil, you ever been to Africa? A couple times. Really? Uh, did you fight any pirates? Once. Off the Florida Keys, but you don't want to hear about that. Sure we do. I love to sail on a ship. Dan, boys, sailing around the world will have to wait until after you've finished your schooling. Well, I don't know. You ask me, you get a better schooling from seeing the world than just reading about it. But if you learn about it first, it'll be that much more memorable when you actually see it. I suppose, as long as you do actually get out and see it. <clears throat> but we're not here to talk about schooling. No, we're not. I appreciate your fixing our shutter, Mr. Riley, but I'm afraid we won't be needing your services here. All right, fine. No problem. But you got shingles loose on your house. If you want to fix them yourself, I suggest you get to it soon. Hard rain hits, you're going to get soaked. And your fence posts are rotten. They need to be replaced before they fall over and your horses run free. See you, boys. Uh, Mr. Riley, I can't pay much. Room and board's all I need. Fine. Our housekeeper, Asia, will speak to you about your duties. You'll find her in the kitchen. And, Mr. Riley, your stories of adventure are enticing, but I think you'll find Plumfield restless enough without them. Do me a favor, though, will you? Call me Nick. The conscience book. When I first came here, I'd worry so much about my weekly report. Well, you never needed to worry. All your reports were about what a fine young student you were. And now you're a fine teacher. And Joe, I received a letter today. I've been accepted to Harvard. Oh, Franz. That's wonderful. Congratulations. Thank you. 
Your Uncle Fritz would be so proud. Yes, I know. They want me to arrive in six days to begin matriculation. Six days? Well, that's very exciting. If I leave for Harvard and, and you have no teacher for the boys... Oh, don't worry about that. I'll teach the boys myself. You have no time to teach that class yourself with all your other duties. And Robbie's so young, he needs you. Franz, we'll be fine. What you've accomplished here makes me so proud. You're the first student from Plumfield to be accepted to a university. And Harvard at that. I'm not going to let anything interfere with this incredible opportunity for you. Please, Captain Hoffman. Please, sir, don't do this. Emil has really grown to love the school. And that is why he fights in the classroom. Oh, it wasn't a fight. It was merely a minor argument that was settled as quickly as it was started. If a gentleman had been teaching him instead of a boy, it wouldn't have started at all. I don't care to discuss it any further. Do you have everything? Yes, sir. Must I leave, Uncle? I really like it here. The decision is made, Emil. And I'll thank you not to question it. Will you make sure my corn is picked on time? I promise. Now, Emil. I know that Emil is your charge, Captain Hoffman, but with all due respect, sir, I do think you're making a regrettable mistake. Even, huh? Yes, sir. Here. The only mistake being made here is keeping this school in operation. Good day, madam. You need it for when you join the Navy. Come along, Emil. Thank you, sir. And it is for this food and for each other we give our thanks. Amen. 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 Mrs. Joe, will the school have to close? No, Nat. I'm not selling Plumfield. What happens, though, if a parent's kid won't pulling kids out? It's only going to be you and me left, Nat. Unless Mr. Lloyd stops sponsoring you. Well, then there'd be no one left. Oh, my goodness, it's not going to come to that. I won't let it. I'll figure something out. Don't worry. Please. Big one snapped the mizzen mast clean in half. Sent the ship crashing onto the rocks. Well, what'd you do? Only thing I could do. Jumped in the water and swam like crazy. Me and eight other men were the only ones who made it ashore. Deserted island, hot, dry, not much food or water. Come on, buddy. Oh, yeah, kind of like Robinson Crusoe. Who's that? Oh, he's a, a, a character in a novel. I get shipwrecked on an island. I have that book in the parlor, Nat, if you'd like to read it. Sure. How long were you stuck on the island? A couple of months. Passing ship picked us up. Ended up finding work in the Arabian desert. Where's that? Near the Sahara. Africa. Actually, the Arabian desert is in Asia Minor. Africa's a separate continent altogether. True. But where I was, working on the Suez Canal, Africa was practically spitting distance. You worked on the Suez Canal? 
Near about a year. Didn't care much for the heat, though. Don't you boys have chores to do? No, I'm not looking to tell them stories. They're the ones who keep asking. Besides, might just get them to read more. I should set the dishes next time. That's right. Why don't you just get the broom? Let's clean this up. Joe, I need to speak with you. <sighs> Meg, I have the most wonderful news. I was hoping you'd stop by. What is it? I heard Emil was removed from the school. That's four boys in two weeks. Don't worry, Meg. Other parents are speaking of removing their children as well. In fact, the whole town is talking about the school. Which brings me to Mr. McBride. Uh, not him. He'd like you to reconsider his offer to buy Plumfield. Uh, I've already told him I'm Joe, not selling. At least think about it. I don't have to think about it. You're losing students with no new prospects on the horizon. How will you generate revenue? That's what I wanted to tell you. I've already found a solution to the problem. Nan! Would you come out here, please? She just arrived this morning. Nan, I'd like you to meet my sister, Meg. Meg, meet Miss Anthea Harding, the first girl to be admitted to the Plumfield School for Boys. Jack and Stuffy, you're filling the water troughs and mucking out the stalls. Dan, you and Tommy unload the grain. Matt, Matt. Right, right here. You're helping me fetch wood. What about me? Man, uh, you can work in the house, help with the dusting. But I want to work out here. Well, there's, there's not really much for you to do. She can uh, help us unload the grain. Dan, I don't think she's quite ready to help you boys unload all those sacks of grain. <laughs> I can do it! I can do it. Would you look at that, Matt? She's stronger than you. <laughs> She is not. Well, why don't you try go picking a fight with her? Shut dude? up, Jack! What are you getting so upset about, huh? What, just because a girl is stronger than you? You're always teasing the little guys, huh, Jack? You're never messing with the boys your own size. Why is that? Easy, Dan. Save your strength for your chores. Now, go on. <clears throat> I can do it. 
going to be running into guys like that the rest of your life. That's just to ignore them. It's not that. It's just I wish Dan wouldn't always jump in all the time. He's just trying to defend you against the bigger boy. And almost always ends up in a fight, which then gets him into trouble. Against the rules, huh? Yeah. Miss Joseph, there's never any call for fighting. Well, I don't know about that. Sometimes you just can't help yourself. Especially when you're standing up for something you feel is right. A party for Franz? Tomorrow night. Franz leaves for Harford in a couple of days. I think we should give him a proper send-off. We'll have music, a special dinner. Oh, and berry pie for dessert. He knows Franz's favorite. Oh, that's a great idea, Jack. Mm. But we'd have to collect the berries this afternoon. I won't be able to take you. I've got to interview another teacher. I'll take them. Yeah, Nick will take us. Yeah, come on, please, Mrs. Uh, Joe. You I'm... know, Franz really does love berry pie. Please. I'm not so sure. I'm back by sundown. Before sundown. Let's get the others. Hill okay. fights. Yep, every Saturday night for 15 minutes. I'm sure let's just have it out. Yeah, sometimes she even joins in. Never heard of a school that allows pillow fights. Nick, Nick, stop the cart. We're here. All right. Whoever picks the most berries, who oh, doesn't have to do chores tomorrow. Yeah. Now, don't wander off. Stay within the sound of my voice. Pretty fast. Faster than you. There's a great bush on the other side of that clearing. What took you so long? My pail's heavier than yours. It's got more berries in it. You see that stump way out there in the woods? I'll race you to it. But, uh, let's leave our pills here. Fine. I don't want you having no excuses. Ready? Go. What's your excuse now? See that little stream over there? First one across it wins. Well, you have very impressive credentials, Mr. Negley. I should hope so. How do you feel about teaching girls? You permit girls in this school? Well, girls deserve an education as much as boys. We are equal, are we not? In my lengthy experience, madam, I've come to realize that the delicate nature of girls leaves them poorly equipped to compete in this man's world. Walk on it? Of course I can walk. Oh. Probably broke it. Stay here. Let me get help. Oh, which way's the pasture? I don't know. Lovely. Who are we missing? Uh, Jack, Tommy, Dan, and Nan. I told them to stay close. Yeah, well, uh, sometimes they end up picking berries all the way home. Y you know what? They're probably already there waiting for us. Hello? 
the boys will be in in a minute. They're just putting the horse and wagon away. Okay. Four of the kids decided to walk home. Four? Well, Jack and Tommy returned a short while ago. They said the rest were with you. Dan and Nan are still out there. I'm sure they're fine. Tell the boys to wash up. He's just got dinner ready. I'm going with you. No need. They were my responsibility. I'm going with you. You've done enough already. Dad! They're picking berries over there. They're both new to Plumfield. They don't know the area. And Nan has a history of running away. You could have told me that earlier. And you could have kept a better eye on them. We better check the woods. They were picking berries. They wouldn't go into the woods. It won't be long now and I'll have a nice fire going. I don't want a fire. I want you to get help. The best thing to do when you're lost is to stay where you are. Let them find you. I should know. I've been lost plenty of times. You know, if it's broke, they're gonna have to set the bone. A friend of my father's is a doctor. He told me about it once. Does this hurt? Hey, what are you doing? How about this? Hey, stop that. I was trying to help. Well, don't. Just don't do anything. You might even have to amputate. And don't talk either. Just, just sit there and shut up. Did you hear that? Yeah. You're gonna be all right, Joe. I know it. Look, I've never really been around kids much, but these kids, they handle themselves better than most of the adults I know. Someone obviously taught them well. That's how I know they're gonna be all right. All we gotta do is find them. Look. Go, it's them. Come on. It's a bear. He's moving away. What are you doing? I'm gonna wrap your ankle good and tight. I told you, I don't want you... We gotta get out of here before that bear comes back. I've never seen a real bear before. You? No. I saw a stuffed one at my grandfather's. It's not as scary as a real one, though. Is it true you lived on the streets of Boston? Mm-hmm. Ever been in jail? Yeah. Where are your parents? They're dead. Yeah, my mother's dead too. She got the fever. What'd your parents die of? I don't know. I was too young. My mother was very pretty. She was always sick. My father doesn't really like me. He says I talk too much. What a surprise. There. Think you can walk on it? That's Nick. We're over here! What happened? I landed hard on my ankle. I don't think it's broken. Just twisted it. Is it hurt bad? He hardly made a sound. Don't you ever run away like that again. Do 
you hear me? Come on. How's that? It's... it's okay. It's feeling a little better. What kind of a punishment are you gonna give me? The pain you're feeling is punishment enough. Are you gonna whip me? No. We don't do that here. But you will be punished. I don't see what all the fuss is about. All kids run away one time or another. Oh, no. That's not true. Not all kids. You never ran away? <laughs> well, yes. Several times, actually. Tell me about it. There was this one time. I had just gotten a new pair of shoes and I wanted to show them. <laughs> Though I was told not to leave the garden, I wandered about the city all day long. <laughs> I played with the little Irish beggar girl in the park. I sailed boats in the Black Bay with strange boys. And I was finally found on a doorstep, asleep, with my arms around this large, filthy sheepdog. That sounds wonderful. Well, it wasn't wonderful the next day. Did your mother whip you? No. No, actually, she asked me what I thought my punishment should be. She asked you? Yes. And I told her that I'd learned my lesson and I promised never to do it again. That sounds fair. Well, it didn't sound fair to my mother. She sat me down, and she asked me how I would treat a bad little puppy dog who kept running away from home. Easy to tie it up. That's what I said. And that is exactly what she did to me. With a long string to the bedpost. And there I stayed. All day long. But I'm not so sure that same punishment's gonna work with you. Sure it would. It's a lot better than a whipping. Well, if you think so. Now, tie this around your waist, and I will give you enough slack to move about the room. You can read, you can sew, and you can sleep. I'll have your meals brought up to you, and I'll return at the end of the day to untie you. That sounds fair. wait until tomorrow when I can just untie it right now. Because by waiting until tomorrow, you will have proven yourself an honorable young girl. Therefore, you will have earned my trust. Whether or not you desire that is entirely up to you. Dan Dillon. He's better. Look, I'm sorry. I told you I'd watch the kids, and I didn't. It's a difficult job. One that requires a great deal of responsibility. They're good children, but sometimes they let their curiosity get the best of them, especially when they're being told stories of adventure. <laughs> like I said before, I... I'm not used to being around kids. My ship's sailing in a few days. Probably best I get going. I'll finish the fence in the morning, then I'll be on my way.
You can't blame yourself, Joe. These things happen. Especially when you have so many children under your care. Fritz would have never let this happen. I'm fooling myself, Meg. Thinking I can do this without him. Perhaps I should take Mr. McBride's offer to buy Plainfield. Hey, Nick, why are you leaving? Did Mrs. Joe fire you? Nah, I was only going to stay a few days anyway, remember? I got a ship to catch. Be good now. Jack, don't be teasing the smaller kids. And Tommy, try not to burn the house down. See Mrs. Joe. Emil. Oh my goodness, what happened to you? Jack, tell me Emil's back. <sighs> Uncle wants to send me to military school in Pennsylvania. I told him I didn't want to go. He did this to you. Put me on a train. Find your way home. The compass Nick gave me. I want to stay here, Mrs. Joe. I know it was wrong to run away, but don't make me go back. The others are in school. You can join them after you finish cleaning up this room. I was winning. When Dad twisted his ankle, we were racing. And I was winning. Not that anyone cares. So that's why you got lost. You challenged Dan to a race in the woods. He challenged me. I couldn't back down. Not easy being a young woman in a man's world, is it? I, I do all right. Yes, you do. And so do I. But sometimes, sometimes even I need a little help. Someone to tell my troubles to, share my secrets with. Someone who understands exactly how I'm feeling. Maybe you could be that someone for me. Sure. Or maybe I could be that someone for you. Where's my nephew? Captain Hoffman, may I help you? Oh, I knew it. Emil, come here. Captain Hoffman. Not a word from you. Come on, son, we're going. This school is finished. Did you think I wouldn't know where to find you? I want to stay here, Uncle. You didn't tell us that you beat him. He disobeyed me. The behavior he no doubt learned at this school. 
Discipline is one of the aspects they neglect to teach. I measure the discipline at this school over any other school of its kind. There's still no permanent teacher. I know, but there will be soon, I promise. Until then, I will continue teaching the class. I sent a letter to Harvard telling them I will be delaying my education until a permanent teacher can be found here. Fine. Keep your school. But Emil will not be attending. Uncle, please, don't make me go. Not have you disobeyed my orders. Now come along. <laughs> Stop it! Boy doesn't want to go. Get your hands off me, sir. I will when you get your hands off of him. Move, sir! Oh! What are you doing? Oh, we better get the deputy to handle this. How dare you strike me? Just showing you how your nephew feels. That's enough. Nick! You're coming with me. I want to stay here, Uncle. Please don't make me go. At least give the school a chance to prove itself. And when Emil finishes his education, if you're not completely satisfied, I'll gladly refund his entire tuition. One month. If the school is not running properly by then, I will remove Emil. Some law. It's a crime to hit a man, but not a boy. Makes a lot of sense. You didn't have to hit him to get what you wanted. I wasn't gonna take that chance. Well, I guess we'll be needing to find a new caretaker. Tell me what's going on here? Ask Mrs. Bear. I heard you pled guilty? Yeah, well, I figured my case was weak, seeing as there was a room full of witnesses. Mind telling me what this is all about? The judge is a close friend of my father's. I've arranged for you to be released into my custody for the rest of your sentence. Your custody? I guess this means you'll be missing your boat. Wouldn't be the first time. Apparently not. I've done some checking. Seems this isn't the first time you've seen the inside of a jail cell. Robbery. That was a mistake. That pocket watch belonged to me. Assault on three occasions? I won't turn my back on my friends. Mr. Riley, I do need a caretaker. But I expect you to conduct yourself in a civil manner, especially around the children. If you don't, you'll find yourself right back inside that jail cell. Do you understand? You and I will probably never see eye to eye. We find ourselves at odds on nearly every issue. Except one. You put the needs of the kids before your own, and you'd be hard-pressed to find fault with that. You know, we don't have to be at odds. Who knows? We could even be friends. I doubt that's possible, Mr. Riley. Really. Nick. My name is Nick. Nick. <laughs> there. Wasn't so hard, was it? We're already off to a good start. Ha!